Here's my little box of treasures from Mulrug uh, shore where I where I collected all these little shells. Now, the little crab was perfect when I picked it up. Absolutely perfect. It had all its little legs and arms. But when I went back to the shore to take a few shots, I brought my little dog with me and I was so sure that the box was safe from him. But didn't he fall in and he uh, crushed the crab slightly? And I'm afraid to say it lost a few of its legs. But I put them back into position as best I could and I sat it on my table in the studio. And as, as you've seen in my videos lately, I started with dilute watercolour, very dilute watercolour. And in this case, I'm using uh, Deep Sea Violet by Schmincke, the super granulating, super granulating colour. And as you can see, the colour is very, very light so that if I make a mistake, I can just wash it away doing the legs on the other side and adding a little tiny drop of forest blue, which is also in the super granulating range by Schmenka. Keeping it really dilute, adding a bit of glacier brown, same range of colours. And when that's dry, then I can start using my pen to pick out the shapes in a bit more in a bit more of a statementy way, in a bit more uh, definition. I'm using document ink in the colour brown by De Atramentis, a German brand of waterproof. Well, certainly the document ink in the De Atramentis range is waterproof, which means that once it's dry, you can paint away happily and your colour won't shift, which is very, very handy. So I'm being quite careful and I'm using my Food A 50, 55 degree nib, which is bent at an angle. And it means that you can get a good range of line width from very narrow to very wide. So being careful to keep my highlights down the centre of the legs. Sorry about the moving, moving crab on the left, by the way. The slightest jolt when you're um, doing a speeded up video makes the crab look like it's actually alive. But it's not. And it didn't smell the best. So definitely it was very dead. So here I'm using little bits of deep sea violet to fill in the legs. And I love the colour range that we have here. The violet the the sea green and the little bits of brown and the joints in the legs, the little tiny joints between each of the segments. I picked that out in an orange colour, which I used, um, which I made using Aquarius orange and uh, Quinophthalone yellow. So I'm building up my colour here, darkening it up, waiting for each layer to dry as much as I have the patience for before adding an extra layer. Because if you add it when it's completely wet, you won't get any definition but also you won't, the colour won't build up as well. Now at this stage, I'm actually adding shadows. There's nothing like adding shadows to suddenly throw your subject into life. And the shadows you might notice are a little bit darker where the subject is touching the page and then they fade away a little bit as they're further away. And I'm using a mixture of Payne's grey and deep sea violet for the shadows, maybe a little bit of deep, deep sea black as well. You can see that there. That's also in the super granulating range by Schmincke. I love this range of colours. I only have uh, four in the range because they are expensive, but I want to build up my collection. So I'm building up the definition, waiting for each layer to dry, watching out to keep, keep an eye on my highlights and not 
um, paint over them by accident. Now, when all that's dry, I can add a little bit of pencil work for definition. This is just a, a, a I think it's a B pencil. It might be 2B, but um, you could you could use anything from a B to maybe, I don't know, three or four B even. And what I'm doing with the shadows is I am using pencil to define the center of the shadows because it just looks more realistic. Continue to build up my colors, deepen up where I think it needs a bit being a bit deeper, adding little bits of color. And you can see as well the way that I wait a couple of minutes after applying any color before I start softening out the edges, just to give it a little chance to settle in and to uh, darken up a little bit. More shadows. Now, time for the next fellow. And as you can see, this is the underside of the same crab. I already messed up and had to wash away my lines, but I started again fiddling around quite a lot with getting the position and the in the end I settled on having it directly across from the first crab now you can see well it's not the first crab it's the same crab but it's the top you can see here I'm just roughing out with a very dilute brown color kind of a yellow ochre color the underside of the crab that uh, slightly alieny looking underside of its carapace and uh, again, trying to be careful to keep the highlights. Once it's dry, I can pick out the shapes of my foodie pen ink. Now, I was a little bit more sketchy when I did the underside of the crab for the simple reason that I just got a little bit fed up being super, super careful. Now, I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, because on the left hand side of the frill there, you can see I really drew it badly. But I wasn't too bothered by that because I knew that once I added the darker color, my mistake would be sort of lost into the into the colors of the of the crab shell. I'm using different positions of my nib, which is why you can see me flicking the pen around so much. And when I get more or less comfortable with my lines, I go around to the outside of my shapes with a slightly heavier line. And that is achieved by using the pen at a different position. So your foodie pen is an absolute godsend when it comes to um, when it comes to getting those lovely, lovely different line widths of your pen. Little tiny dots bringing texture in. Oh, this is my fuchsia pink ink by Diatramentis, again waterproof. And I don't know if it made much difference, but I liked doing it. Mixing up a little bit of paint here, the yellow ochre and the uh, quino phthalo and yellow together for the underside of this little carapace. So it's a very much different color palette than the top side of the crab, which is all about the purples. And the underside is all about the creamy browns and the yellow and I don't know why I didn't bother with colour for its underneath. Maybe because it figured no one was ever going to see it. It didn't know that one day Roisin was going to paint it. Hope I did a good job. I hope if he saw it, she, stroke, he, whatever, I hope he would say, wow, I look really good in your painting. So as you can see, I'm darkening up the colours of the little leggies and adding that little, that deep sea violet by Schmincke, which is, oh my goodness, so appropriate for this subject. It just works so, so well. And one of the lovely things about the super granulating colour is that it doesn't kind of be, it never seems to be too dark and too in your face. It's, it's gentle and you can build up the colours in a gentle way. Such a soft colour. I don't know if all the colours are like that, but certainly the deep sea violet is just such a, a nice colour to use. It's got an element of grey and an element of purple. And I just find it so useful for so many situations. So you can see I added those little orange, little knobbly bits, the knees and the elbows in between the segments of the arms. And again, I, I made that colour using Aquarius orange and really any yellow is fine. And really any orange is fine too. Um, I'm, I'm usually not too specific about the colours you choose because a lot of colours will do. All you're trying to do is match the colour as best you can to your subject. I'm building up the colours behind the little uh, breathing apparatus, not for want of a better description, and making sure once again to keep my highlights um, respected. In other words, leaving strips of plain white paper so that you get that feeling of not just light, hitting the crab's body, but also a feeling of a light texture. And here we go, pretty much done. There's my two crabs, my one crab, two sides. There's the underside, there's the top. And there's the colors that I used. And the description of those colors is at the end. 
you'll be able to buy a download of this class from, from my website, roshincurate.com. And the good thing is you'll be able to hit the pause button. You'll be able to do it at your own pace and watch it as many times as you like. I look forward to seeing you next time.